Hey Mini Wargamers, welcome to another episode of The Machine Shop. Um, and in today's episode, we are going to talk about dead miniature games. So out of production, no longer produced, or no longer supported miniature games. Now, why do I want to talk about it? Well, one, it's a topic near and dear to my heart. I've been playing um, miniature games, war games, for so long that just kind of through natural selection, tons of the miniature games that I've played are no longer in production, or the companies that make them don't support them. Um, that is inevitable. If you stay in this hobby long enough, everything that you love will leave you. I know, that sounds dark, but it's, <laughs> it's true. Um, miniature games come and go. That's just a fact of life. People get excited about new ones. The popularity dims and wanes, and you don't have them around anymore. Now, you might also discover a miniature game no longer in production for the first time, somehow. You might see them on the internet, you might see miniatures in a bookstore, or in a hobby shop, or something like that, and just discover it for the first time yourself. Um, so the reason I really wanted to do this show is because tons of you guys have been asking in the comments um, and sort of like talkback sections of YouTube and the website and on my Facebook page um, about lots of the miniature games, asking do I play um, War of the Ring, do I play uh, Blood Bowl, The Hobbit, Epic, um, whatever, <laughs> tons of different miniature games, and even suggesting that we do games on or um, film battle reports with dead miniature games. So this is kind of a shout out to you guys. Um, I wanted to talk about this topic because a lot of you guys have been asking me about it um, and asking questions even about those miniature games. So uh, I think the question is really, that I'm gonna try and answer here is, uh, are these games really dead? Well, I think the answer for that is no. If there's one person out there playing a miniature game, it's not dead. But every person that's involved in or excited about a miniature game, it's either not in production anymore or the miniature company's gone, like it's completely finished is always going to be faced by two problems. And we'll talk about those two problems right now. All right, the number one problem. And this is a problem that anybody who has played a miniature game or who loves a miniature game that's out of production or the company's gone um, that makes it will acknowledge instantly, I have nobody to play with. <clears throat> well, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. You're not necessarily going to have anybody to play with. Um, why do you not have anybody to play with? Well, it's simple. The driving motivating force that was going to find you opponents um, would be the company making that game. They would advertise it, they would put it in shops, shops would carry it, um, people would be playing it and finding out about it. So if it's hard to find opponents for a game uh, that's kind of niche, like it's hard to find maybe you play Infinity, it's hard to find people to, to play with, it is going to be a thousand times harder to find somebody to play a miniature game that's out of production for. Why? The uh, independent game store and the retailer can't make any money off it. They can't get the product anymore. The only way to get the product is second hand. So that guy does not care about that game at all. all right? He might love that game himself, but if he's not going to be able to sell it, then how is he going to make any money off it? Um, so you're not going to see it floating around in the game store unless it's old product that he's gotten a discount bin or something like that. Um, the, the, the thing that's kind of come up though, um, and that has happened over the years, you'll find is if a, if a miniature game that's no longer in production is fairly popular or it's fairly visible, Someone's taken it upon themselves to find opponents. Uh, and this is sort of the, the first step to overcoming uh, dead miniature game, not having anyone to play against. Number one, use the internet. Um, if you are a Blood Bowl player, you've probably heard of this website. It's called The NAF. It is the biggest collection of Blood Bowl tournament information, um, communities and leagues. Uh, team statistics, yes, like real life sports teams, Blood Bowl players will usually keep statistics for their teams. Uh, and resources, I think, in the world. Um, it has an awesome uh, support by donation system where you can sign up for the NAF and donate to support them. And you get a set of block dice. Uh, these are great for anybody playing Blood Bowl for the first time because you don't get them anywhere else. Block dice are something the Games Workshop doesn't produce anymore. So you would have no way of finding block dice without joining the NAF, basically, or finding them on eBay or scrounging for them. Um, anybody who's been playing for <laughs> Blood Bowl for many, many years probably has a mug somewhere with like 600 block dice in it, like I do. So, <laughs> so block dice, yes, you will get them from the NAF. Um, but that's an example, really, of a dead miniature game where the players who love it so much have gone about making a nexus on the internet, a place to support and continue to advertise and promote that game. Uh, that might not exist for you, but start there. Look on the internet and try and find a collection or links of people playing the game. Internet forums are a great place to do it. Um, Facebook groups, and just typing into the search, search bar on Facebook and looking for my area, this game, you might come up with something. I've found places like that in the past. Now, here's the second thing. 
Uh, there's one other workaround, and it's actually the one that will be the most successful for you, but it's the hardest. Teach people how to play the game and get yourself two armies for the game. Whatever it is, blah, blah, uh, two teams. If it's epic, two forces, whatever. Be prepared to teach people how to play the game you're really excited about that's no longer in production and it's dead. You will get opponents that way. I have taught tons of people who've never played a miniature game before, but might have played board games, how to play Blood Bowl, and they have loved it. Um, that is just a reality. I talked about this in my last show. Uh, if you don't have someone to play a game against, you don't have any opponents, and that's a challenge for you, be prepared to do the legwork yourself. It, will, it is the best way to find an opponent because one, you can pick from your buddies, people you're already friends with that you want to hang out with and play games against. You can teach them how to play a game. Um, <clears throat> and two, it's way less hit and miss than the internet. Because sometimes someone's posted on the internet saying they, they're interested in playing X game and they live in X area. But you don't know how old that post is. Like it could be from 2009. And then who knows if that guy even lives here anymore, right? So taking the matter into your own hands, getting two armies, putting them together, teaching people how to play. It's your best way to get opponents. And opponents that you'll play with again because they're your buddies probably already or the people that you know already. Um, and then one last little bit of advice for this. Don't hate me because I'm going to say this out loud, but you will have much more success showing people to play a dead miniature game that doesn't exist anymore if your miniatures are painted and you play it on a nicely painted gaming table. Why? If you're showing someone who's not ever played a miniature game before, they will be way more interested in a little cinematic adventure that you do in front of them than in some little chits moving around a board. Unless they're already a board gamer. If they're a board gamer, that might be okay. But it's way more impressive to show the full gamut of what, what it could look like when you're first teaching somebody than if it's not. Um, and even if you think you're a bad painter, if you're showing somebody who's never played a miniature game before or a war game before, uh, you are a much better painter than they probably are. <laughs> so even if you think your painting skills aren't up to par, try it anyway, do it anyway, give it a try, and you'll probably have a greater success rate. So there's my answers for the number one problem. I don't know we play with. Use the internet. And if all else fails, take matters into your own. Actually, even if it doesn't, Take matters into your own hand. You want opponents for a game? Make them. But that means that you're probably going to have to shell out for two armies, um, the rules, and a place to play. Because you have to show people how to play. The number two problem. How do I get the rules? How do I get the models? Well, the thing with most dead miniature games, I would say probably 60 or 70% of the people that play them are excited about them. They played them already. <laughs> so this might not actually be a problem for you. That's why I put it as the number two problem, not the number one problem. Um, I, for instance, have more specialist game miniatures for Games Workshop than I'm actually comfortable telling you because <laughs> my wife might see this. <laughs> um, I own miniatures for every single specialist game that Games Workshop ever produced. I even made Orky Barroom Brawl miniatures. I, I'm just that guy. So, uh, yeah, this might not actually be a problem for you. Um, it might also not be a problem because the games that are out of production, they might have been giving their rules away for free, you know, um, before they actually went fully out of production. So for installed special games by Games Workshop, all those rules were released as free PDFs for the last, I don't know, like five or six years. So those rules are available for free still. Like somebody has got them somewhere and they've got disclaimers on them saying that they're available for reproduction for personal use. So don't worry about them because they're free. Um, <clears throat> But if you're having a hard time finding the rules, <clears throat> the best places I know of to find the rules, use bookstores. First and foremost, I've found more cool old gaming rule books in used bookstores, and that's the reason why I will walk into any used bookstore anywhere every time I see one than I care to admit. Um, I just recently found, um, if you look on my Facebook page, you can see pictures of it, a huge stack of like first edition and late edition or early edition um, Games Workshop books at a local game store here in St. Catharines. And I paid like 30 bucks for this pile of them. And there was like Lost the Dam, Slaves of Darkness, a hardcover copy of Rogue Trader, which means it was probably released at uh, the original Games Day in 88 when uh, Rogue Trader, you know, 87 when Rogue Trader came out. Um, tons of stuff that was super, super cool. Uh, and I found it for free. I found, I found in, uh, I was in um, Victoria, down the street on Johnson Street from the Games Workshop store in Victoria. I found a complete edition of Gorka Marco, The Rules, The Other Book, and actually Gorka Knob, or Gork, yeah, Gorka Knob, um, in, uh, in the bookstore, like just down the street from there. And it was like five bucks, and I've got these three books. And I already had, here's the sad thing, I'm probably collecting all this and robbing other people of it. <coughs> I already had all those books. And I already had them in digital edition too, but I can't not buy those books if I see them. I'll just get, I'll, they might be in slightly better condition than the ones I have, and then I've got a copy I can game with and a copy that will just sit in a pristine box somewhere. 
So use bookstores first and foremost. Um, and then of course there is the internet. Um, and there are two great places. Um, most internet forums will have some kind of swapping page where you can post stuff. Um, two great places and a not so great place I'll talk about for finding that stuff. The not so great place I'll do first, eBay. I mean, you, you can find lots of stuff posted on eBay. It's probably gonna be expensive, but that's life dealing with eBay. Um, but then there's lots of buy, sell, swap uh, websites. Two of my favorites, just to, to give them shout outs because I've gotten tons of great stuff through there, Bartertown. Bartertown is probably one of the oldest swapping places on the internet for gaming stuff, especially miniature gaming. Um, and they have a great, not airtight, but very heavily moderated um, good bad trader system. So you can feel pretty safe doing trades with people that are on that site if they've got a good trader rating. Um, and then uh, the Lead Adventure Forum. And I love the Lead Adventure Forum. I'm gonna give a shout out to them right now because they are probably the coolest, no, they are the coolest miniature game wargaming forum on the internet because they deal with everything. The Lead Adventure Forum, I imagine, is filled with like miniature game enthusiasts who are exactly like me. They're interested in, in miniature wargaming in general. They don't have any kind of like um, sort of brand loyalty. They just love toy soldiers and they love making up games toy soldiers and they're completely not afraid to just make the game they want to play if they want to play it. So if you've never been there, check them out, Lead Adventure Forum. Um, they're based in Germany and they are like the coolest forum ever. But they have a section called the Bazaar, the Bazaar of Obscurities, which is their little swap meet section. And you can find the weirdest stuff there. So if you're into collecting dead miniature games and you're looking for really weird old stuff, check them out. Um, especially if you're part of like the old Hammer community or you're interested in collecting Road Trader or really early Citadel miniatures or anything like that. Uh, great website and great guys. So those are great places for um, finding rules for games. Miniatures, same exact caveats. Um, you can go to bargain bins in your local gaming store and check out those things. Anybody who's selling stuff by commission, right? So like somebody brings in a pile of old miniatures and they put them in a bag or put them on a shelf or something like that. Um, you can find good old miniatures that way. I was in London, Ontario, not England, like five or six years ago. And I walked into a comic book store that was down the street, um, downtown in London. And I found this huge baggie of like old Jess Goodwin Gene Steeler hybrids. <laughs> just randomly. Um, <clears throat> another baggie that had the original uh, Termagants, they were just Tyranids back then um, from the Road Trader book in them with like these weird guns. And they look like Termagants, but they're actually the, the Tyranid warrior back then. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just from randomly walking into places. Don't be afraid to dig. Flea markets, whatever, you can find old miniatures for old miniature games. So that's the number two problem, and it is the number two problem for a reason. Uh, typically, if you, are into, if you are already into dead miniature games, you have a collection of dead miniature game miniatures. You're probably just looking to complete your collection or expand it. Um, so the rules aren't usually a huge problem for you and you've probably already got enough miniatures to play. Um, but those are some great places to find that stuff. Uh, internet forums, Light Adventure Forum, um, Bar Town, and of course eBay. You can always go to eBay, but be expected to pay a little bit more because that's the way eBay is. Um, so there you go. There's my talk about dead miniature games. Um, let's check out what's on my panning table. Now there is a third option to the number two problem and the number one problem. Um, and that, pro that option is you do it yourself. Um, now this is especially, sorry, this is the third option to the number two option, which is you don't have the rules, you don't have the models. Um, if there's a dead miniature game that you can't find models for, here's what I encourage you to do because here's what I would do. Make them yourself. Um, the reason I'm gonna mention this is because I'm going to play a game of Mordheim with Steve today for World War Wars. It's a little bit of fan service. Um, you guys have been asking about, it's one of the reasons why I did this video, you guys have been asking about dead miniature games, especially Mordheim since we started doing Old World Wars. Um, and Mordheim is basically just a great skirmish system, like Kill Team, for playing Warhammer. So the reason I kind of come out with this is you do not have to play dead miniature games by the rules of those miniature games or with the miniatures that they used to be played with. <clears throat> and the great example I have is Mordheim because I am gonna show you in a minute and on the panning table um, some bits and pieces from my Mordheim Warband that I'm gonna play with today that are made completely out of just current range Citadel miniatures. I'm not using the Mordheim miniatures. Steve is not gonna use Mordheim miniatures. He's gonna use his Vampire Count miniatures as they are. <clears throat> Chances are that nine times out of 10 with a dead miniature game, you could make the miniature game, like the miniatures that you need to play it yourself. Just recently, I think it was on the Facebook group for either Specialist Games or the um, Fans Life for Games Workshop, I was looking at guys who were sculpting their own, well not sculpting their own, but modeling their own Battlefleet Gothic ships. They can't get Gothic ships anymore, they want some. They didn't want to go on eBay, so they just used bits from 
the Imperial like guard accessory sprue for vehicles and plastic hard and Space Marine vehicle accessory sprue, uh, Eldar, jet bikes, whatever, to make their own Gothic ships. Completely viable. They look super cool. The rules for Gothic have been free forever. Why not do it? So that was my third option for you guys is take matters into your own hands. Um, if you can't find the models or the rules for something, make your own rules. These games aren't played competitively. Like they're not something that people will tell you there's a right and a wrong way to play. Bodge the rules, make them however you want. Um, do it yourself. I'm a very DIY gamer and I, I think that, that that's something that if you really love a dead miniature game um, and you're frustrated that you can't find the models for it or that you know, you're having a hard time collecting them or they're really expensive, make them yourself. Like there's nothing stopping you from doing that. There's an entire uh, series that's been really popular in White Dwarf right now called Blanche Itsu. Uh, John Blanche's like little Inquisitor miniatures and all of his gaming buddies that hang out in Warhammer World's little uh, Inquisitor miniatures. Those are just guys playing the Inquisitor game that was in 54 millimeter in 28 millimeter. They have an event called Inquisitor Weekend or Inquisitor Weekend or something like that. And there's Inquisitor 28 mil. There's like a big group about it. It's just them taking matters in their own hands. The 54 millimeter miniatures are gone. They've always wanted to play it in 28. They made their own models. They used the, the variation of the rules and they play games. It's awesome. Uh, it's, it's what I think the probably Lead Adventure Forum is founded on is making up your own miniature games or bodging somebody else's rules or whatever. So that's my last plea um, is if in doubt, don't be afraid to do it yourself. Uh, I'll show you some examples of that right now and on the painting table. I wanna show you the last couple four models that I touched up today. Um, or yesterday to, uh, to play this game of uh, Warhammer More Time with Steve. So, okay, there we go. That was the number two problem. Uh, can't find the models, can't find the game. That was your third option. Uh, and let's check out what's on my painting table. All right, so we have on the painting table where we talk about what I'm working on right now. So I was just saying, um, these are some dwarves for my dwarf war band. I painted them the same color as my dwarf army for fantasy. <clears throat> these are my two Thunders, they're called Thunders in Mordheim, but they're Quarrelers, they have crossbows. Um, and then my two, just Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, you know, double-handed weapons in Mordheim. Um, now these guys are just made out of the Dwarf Quarreler box. Um, I believe I made these guys with the uh, axes using the banner bearer bits and just a couple of the axes that came in the kit. And then the Quarrelers are just standard Quarrelers. Um, I also converted everything else in the Warband, which you can see, you can click the link and check out the Warbands um, in the battle report. Uh, out of that box, so there's a lot of sculpting involved. <laughs> um, it came from a paint bet we had, oh geez, like two years ago now, um, at a training camp um, that I ran in, I can't remember what city it was in. Anyway, we wanted to do some um, just painting between that skill at that training camp and the next training camp uh, when I was working for Games Workshop. And so the bet was you had to make uh, a fancy skirmish like game, basically or a skirmish army. Uh, using only models that were available currently in the range. So you, basically because there was only the plastic miniatures available, um, we had to convert them out of the stuff that came in the store. So uh, there was no plastic troll slayer and that meant I had to, it hadn't come out yet actually, there is now, but there wasn't one before. I um, mean I had to actually sculpt a troll slayer myself out of some parts. So you'll see it if you click the link and check out the battle report. Um, it should be either be out now or maybe at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, and there they are. So. That's what I've been working on painting. Um, what I'm super excited about though is this week my wife was having me help her organize our basements and I found a box of War Machine models that I'd lost uh, in this pile of bits. There are two mules, a Vanguard, a Bokur, um, and then in this little baggie is a unit of Daughters of the Flame from my Menoth army and a Vice Scrutator Vindictus, I believe his name is. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm super happy about that. Oh yeah, and a Buccaneer, there's a Buccaneer in here too. Because I'm working on my mercenary army and I was really hoping to find those mules uh, and that vanguard so I can paint them and stick them in my four star syndicate army because their mules are kind of awesome, especially as I've got broadside bird I have to paint. So um, there they are. Uh, that's what's next on my painting table, maybe, but uh, I've got lots of stuff that needs to be worked on still too. My painting table tends to fill up pretty fast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, my own painting table. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, that was another episode of The Machine Shop with Ash. Uh, our next episode, we're gonna talk about, uh, I'm not gonna give it away, but it's got to do with, it's got to do, I think, with people who like dead miniature games. So we'll see. We'll see if you guys can guess what it is, but uh, I'll see you next time, and until then, happy gaming.